Shalom Yisrael, Yasharalim, Yisrael, Shalom, peace. This is Brother J. Yisrael coming to you again, praise Yah, on February 24th, 2024, going by the Gregorian calendar. We know that's not our right timeline as Yasharalim, as Israelites, but that's under that's what we under right now i come to you today wishing you well praying for peace healing in your life love but the topic today is patience and long suffering If we are to follow the Most High Yah, we must have patience and long suffering. If you look in your King James Bibles and older Bibles, in place of patience, they have long suffering in place of that word. So it's extreme patience. It's waiting on the Most High Yah, waiting on Yahweh, waiting on Yahweh Shai, waiting on Hamashiach. And the Bible even says that the Most High Yah has long suffering. He has to have patience. He doesn't have to, but he has patience to let his own word and his own prophecy be fulfilled. He doesn't like this wickedness that's going on in the world, but he's patient and suffering because of our disobedience, because of the wickedness that's in the world. He's an Elohim, a God of peace and love. He doesn't want wickedness and destruction in the world, but he also uses everything to his measure. So even wickedness, Satan, wicked men and women, they all are being used to his design, to his measure, until his time is ready for them to be destroyed. Let's get into a word of prayer, and then after that we can get right into the scriptures. Almighty Yah, thank you for giving us another day. Thank you for bringing us here today and any day that you give us, any day that anyone might see this. Father, we thank you for the breath of life. We know without you, we would not exist. The world wouldn't exist. Nothing would exist. Father, we want to thank you at all times when things are good when things are bad, when things are horrible, and when things are just okay. If we can accept the good, we must also accept the bad as much as it hurts. That's part of our spiritual growth. Father, we pray for all those who need prayer, and that's all of us. We pray for our nation, the nation of Yasharala, Yazrael, your Israelite people. We pray for all those that are righteous. We pray that the wicked turn away from wickedness and bow and turn to righteousness. Call on your name, Father. But we also pray that your will be done. And we know that you will judge the righteous and the wicked. Father, we pray for all those who are going through illness, all those who are homeless, all those who are struggling with their spiritual walk, all those who have struggles of the mind, struggles of the body. Those who can't afford clothes, who can't afford food or barely afford clothing and food. We pray for all those who need your help, all those who have lost loved ones. Father, give us endurance, patience, and long suffering. Give us the endurance to deal with the long suffering. To know that just as your son 
Yahusha Hamashiach, just as Messiah suffered, we must suffer. We must bear our cross, pick up our burden, just as he did. If he was perfect and he had to suffer, he's our great teacher. Then we have to suffer and follow suit. Give us the strength, the healing, the patience, the peace that only you can give to do so, Father. Thank you. We love you. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to open up in Ephesians chapter 4, the second verse. Matter of fact, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. As a prisoner for Yah, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. This is the NIV version. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Now I'm going to read the King James Version of that. That's Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the first and second verse. Because the King James Version tells of long suffering. So it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of Yah, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Long suffering. Extreme patience. Despite whatever's going on, we must wait on Yah. Let's jump to Psalms, the 62nd chapter. Psalm 62. My soul finds rest in Yah alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. So, we must wait on Yah. We know that our salvation is not in the world. And we can't be moved by all these different things that are happening, whether they be in our lives, as individuals, the things that we see around us, violence, war, all these different topics, the things that come up, even the things that are not bad, we can't be dismayed by them, celebrity gossip, all this foolishness. We can't get caught up in that either. Psalm 62, my soul finds rest in Yah alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. And when you go through certain things in life, you grow in spirit. That's why the father talks about long suffering because through suffering your spirit grows if you suffering for the most high if you suffering in righteousness through suffering you come back to the father whenever there's trouble as israelites we always call on the father sometimes he has to let trouble happen to us a lot of times 
because that's the only time that we will seek him the way we need to seek him and depend on him the way we need to depend on him. When everything's going good for us, we have a tendency to be in those things in the world, in that relationship, in that job. Worry about that car. Worry about that video game. Worry about them sports. Worry about that argument. Worry about that food and kicking it. Those vacations. It's not till we get sick, till we don't have something, till we in need, then we seek the Father. We should be seeking the Father at all times. But our Father, Abba Yah, created us. So he knows us. He knows all of our tendencies. Our ancestors did a lot of the same things and worse sometimes. So he knows our tendencies. I need to do this to them. So they'll get back in line. Just like the curses. I need to let them go through this so they can know that I am Yah. So they can call on me. So they can come back to me. So they can know that they cannot reach salvation. They cannot have a good life in this world. They cannot defeat their enemies. They cannot have peace. They cannot have anything good without me. I am Yah. I am their creator. This is what the Father knows and tells us. But we must know it. We must believe it. We must have patience and long suffering for Yah. Let's continue. Now we're going to go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 64, 4 and 5. It says, since ancient times, no one has heard, <clears throat> excuse me, no ear has perceived. No eye has seen any Elohim besides you, any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. Listen to the word. The Most High will act, but he acts on his time. He is our creator, our master. We are his servants. He made us. We cannot rush him. You can try if you want. You're not going to succeed, but that's on you. But if we wait on him and be patient, remember, we are made in the image of Yah. So the same way he has to wait and be patient, the same way he waits and, be, and is patient. Just think about his long suffering, how he had to, he created a world. He created a people. And he got to watch us sin and do wrong against him. That's suffering. Then he, he has compassion and mercy to say, I could just destroy them all. But because I am loving and just and faithful, I have mercy. They are my treasured possession, even though they are stiff-necked. They hard-headed. They wicked. 
They back and forth. One minute they want to serve me. The next minute they serving other things, other gods, money. They chasing out. They not treating each other right. Then they'll go through a period of time where they treat each other right. But then they'll go through another long period of time where they do wrong. Then I have to chastise them. I have to spank them. I have to whoop them hard. Sometimes I spank them lightly. They keep doing it. So we cannot blame the father. In wickedness, ignorance, and spiritual immaturity, many people blame the father. But that's sinful. That's wickedness. How you going to speak against your maker? I know that it's hard. When you're going through things, when you see bad things and say, well, why would y'all let this happen? He gave people free will. It's balance in the world. You have the ability to do good or bad. He wants to be loved and followed, not by force, but by choice. Because that's real love. If you force somebody to do it, then that's not really love because they don't have a choice but to do it. But if they do it willingly, then it proves that they love you. It proves that they're willing to fight against the flesh, fight against sin, to do the right thing, to repent. This is all, these are all the Father's works and wills. This is how he designed it. So as hard as it might be for you to understand and understand it, it really don't matter whether you agree with it or understand it or not. The Father's will is going to be done on earth and in heaven. You can either get in line, repent, do your job to the best of your ability and serve Yah. Or not. But it's consequences. If you don't. Whether you think so or not. Hell is hot. Hell is bad. And it's for eternity. If you can't sit in the presence of the father. Just think about. What's going on with us now. Because we're not in the presence of the Father like we should be. And that's in the world. So just think about in hell. How bad that would be. If you think this hell. If you can't take. The killing. The wars. The destruction. All the things that you're going through. In this world because of our disobedience. And because we up under. These wicked nations who follow Satan and do this evil and all these evil people in the world. If you can't take that. If you don't like that, which you shouldn't. Which brings me to this chapter. Uh, we're going to go first, John. We skipping around a little bit today. We're going to go first, John. Uh, okay, we'll go first, John 2, 15 and 16 and 17. First John chapter two, verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of a sinful man, the lust in his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the father, but from the world. The world and his desires pass away. But the man who does the will of Yah lives forever. 
forever. That's the kingdom of heaven. Because believe it or not, the world is going to pass away. The world as we know it and the world in general. And the things of the world, we can't be naive and ignorant. We know how the world is. All it cares about is money, greed, power. That explains corruption. Excuse me. Sexual deviancy and perversion. Fear. Everything is based on those things. That's why people rob, steal, kill, persecute other people, commit genocide on other nations and races, rape, murder, molestation. All these things are covered up under that. Ways of the world. And as much as you want to, that's your human side. When you go through problems, as much as you want to complain, be angry, compare yourself to others, please resist that. We have to resist that. I have to resist it. You have to resist it. You don't think I look around? I look around sometime and be like, man, they not even calling on the Father. Why they not going through this? Why they, why they look like they living good? Why does everything seem like it's working in their favor? Why they seem like they don't have a care in the world? That's because they are of the world. Which brings us to our next, our next chapter, our next verse. We're going to go John 15. John 15, verse 18. John chapter 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. This is Yahweh, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Messiah speaking. Speaking to the disciples. And as he said, who, are my, who is my mother? Who is my brothers? When they told him, your mother and your brothers and, and your sister is in the crowd. He said, those who believe in Yah, who believe in the Father, that's my mother, my brothers, and my sister. So we all his disciples who believe in the Most High Yah, who believe in Yahweh, who believe in Yahuwah. We all our family. So he's speaking to all of us. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. 19. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. That's the perfect and key teaching from, from the teacher. From the Son of Man, from Messiah, the rabbi, the teacher, the ultimate, the great teacher, the one who died for our sins. He's telling us, the world not going to like you. They not going to love you. They not going to care about you. If you love the Father, if you love me and the Father, they're going to hate you. So you a fool. If you expecting any different and you're not listening and you're not following the teaching and we have to learn that it's a hard pill to swallow. 
because it's going to come from your family members. It's going to come from your nation, your brothers and sisters that are Israelites, black people. It's going to come from other nations. It's going to come from Gentiles. It's going to come from all over. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. So as tough as it is to overstand, if you get in your butt whoop right now, and you know the Father, If you got the Father within your heart, within your soul, within your spirit, you probably is getting your butt whooped. You probably is getting toe off in the world. But it's supposed to be like that. Long suffering. If Hamashiach went through it, if the Messiah went through it, then we got to go through it. If Yah is going through it, we got to go through it. And he keeps on teaching us right here. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they persecuted Hamashiach, they will persecute us also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. For those who do. But we know most don't. And most didn't obey Yahushua Hamashiach. They didn't obey his teaching. They didn't obey Messiah's teachings. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. They don't know your help. They don't know the Most High Yah. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates the Father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my Father. But this is to fulfill what was written in the law. They hated me without reason. Remember, the law... The prophecies all must be fulfilled. So it was written before Yahweh Shai came. Before Hamashiach came, it was written. That they will hate him for no reason. He came, he was healing and teaching, and they hating him. He helping people. He humble. Yahushua Hamashiach did not come bragging, calling people names, telling him, telling anybody he better than them. Get away from me. Don't touch me. He didn't say none of that. He was helping. He sat down with, excuse me. He sat down with everybody. The Pharisees and Sadducees, he talked to them. All them elders who was fake righteous and leaders, he talked to them. He sat down with prostitutes, tax collectors. He helped the sick, the lame, the common, everybody. 
the lowly, all those who needed it. Cast out demons. They accused him of being a prince of demons, being with Satan. And he had to tell them a house can't be divided against itself. Satan ain't casting out demons in his own name. That don't even make sense. I'm casting out, he's I'm casting out in the name of the Most High Yah. In the Father. Then he he asked him, What you doing? Who you casting them out in? Because he's ba he's saying, I don't know you. You ain't one of mine. Y'all faking, pretending for y'all own gain and to look good for the people, to get money, which many people are doing today, just for the look of it. So people could say, oh, look at this group. Look at this church. Look at this camp. Look at this guy, this elder, this pastor, this bishop. We the greatest. We the only ones who know anything. Everybody else don't know nothing. The most I can't speak to nobody else. They take a scripture or something too far and say, a lot of them read a scripture that said, you know, certain men were going to be vessels for the most high. They appointed themselves, maybe some of them. And they saying who the most high only going to deal with them. He ain't dealing with nobody else. How you going to say what the father doing? That's blasphemy. You can't tell the father nothing. All you can do is say, father, I I pray that I, I'm doing my job and you, you're dealing with me and I'm not in my own mind and in my own delusion about nothing. And we know. The father don't look at the ways that man look. He ain't looking for appearance. The father picked people that you wouldn't think he would pick. The father don't care if you know Hebrew good. The father don't care if you smart and somebody else ain't as smart. He don't care if you strong and good looking, muscular, got a good figure. I'm going to go so far as to say, which is true, I know it's true, he not going to pick you solely because you a male, because many of them think that. If it's a female that got him in her heart and love and doing his will, he'll pick her before you. If you in wickedness, if you about yourself, if you think, because I'm me, I'm a big man, I'm this, I'm that, that's why I was chose. He going to pick me. He ain't going to care. He'll pick somebody else because of your heart. Ain't right. Or he'll pick a guy that you at least expect. We don't know what he'll do. That's not even our place to say. All we could go off is his word. And our, un our overstanding and understanding that we have, which is very limited. Very limited. Let's keep going. We're going to go start back over from uh, John 15. We're going to start at 19 again. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you the this way because of my name for they do not know the one who sent me they don't know y'all uh 15 and 26 when the counselor comes whom i will send to you from the father the spirit of truth 
who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. That's key. Because you might not have known it. You might not have done what you were supposed to do. But if you was from with the Father and with Messiah from the beginning, you was with him from the beginning. You just didn't know it. And everything you're going through is what you're supposed to go through. Ultimately, it's not a coincidence. Ain't no such thing as coincidences. Coincidences. Ain't no such thing as accidents when it comes to the Most High. Let's go Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you, you will be able to test and approve what Yah's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now I'm going to read that also in the King James. Again, that's Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yah. So we can't worry about the world. We cannot worry about this body, this life like that. I know it's hard and confusing because you like, I'm in this body. I'm in this world, but I can't be of the world. It sounds crazy. But you got to walk in the world. but be of Yah. So it's like a video game almost. You in a certain world or level on the video game, but you can't be of that world. You just in there fighting. And you trying to get to another point. You trying to get out off that level. You trying to ascend to a different level. That's what it is. So our minds, our hearts, and our spirit and soul must always be thinking of the kingdom. Always be thinking of Yah and his will. The stuff of the world is meaningless. That's not to say if you like a certain food that you can't eat that food. But everything we do in the world, we got to take. It can't be taken extremely serious when it comes to pleasures. Your pleasure, we have to take out of being the most high Yah. If you eat the food and you like the food, that's fine. You ate it, you liked it. Don't, it shouldn't go no further than that. We can't be lusting out of it, thinking about it all the time, putting it before the most high. Uh, you have to, that's why fasting, fasting, getting in touch and in tune with the most high, deep in prayer, stuff like that is important because you need to 
take yourself away from things. Because in a human body, we got a tendency to get too attached to things, too dependent on things, too consumed with things. And instead of just eating, you know, one steak this month, we got to eat it 10 times or we got to be thinking about, oh, when I'm going to get my next steak and it was so good and I want to do this. A vacation, not wrong, going on vacation, but that's not what we should be geared up and geeked up about, excited about. We need to be excited in the most high. Just think of how most people operate. We've done it ourselves. But we have to get out of those things. If you're not in it no more, great. If you are in it, you have to stop doing it. Look how much time that we put into all these other things. Work. Ooh, let's, what, what, let's plan out this vo vacation. Ooh, what they arguing about on social media. Oh, what's the next dance, the next trend? Oh, what's playing on, who coming on uh, tomorrow? Who coming on tonight on sports? Oh, what this person talking about? Oh, I want this, I need this. That consume my whole day, our whole week. And then you might give the father a few seconds or a few minutes. That's disrespectful. He's everything. He the reason why you here. Why we all here. And he get the least amount of time. We can't do it. Cannot do it. You have to switch everything up. He's supposed to be getting the most amount of time. I can't speak for each individual person. If you own your job and the father you know, puts it on you to work and do this particular job and that's the means that you have to do for your family or to uh, survive and that's, you know, that resonating in your heart and it's okay with the father as far as you're concerned. The father should be on your mind while you at work. If you work in some type of job where it don't allow you to be able to think it don't allow you to be able to take some time in your mind to dedicate to the Father, whether you listening to something, praying, talking to him. You got to let it go. What did Hamashiach tell us? Whatever causes you to sin, get rid of it. If your eye causes you to sin, you sinning because of what you looking at, porn, whatever. He say, gouge out your eyes. It's better for you to, enter, to walk around the world with no eye and get to the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> than to have both eyes and get sent to hell. If your hand causes you to sin, Cause you stealing, you whatever, you killing, whatever, chop it off. It's metaphorical. It could be literal, but it's metaphorical. The Messiah's not telling you to, to mutilate yourself. He's saying whatever's causing you to do wrong, get it out your life. Cut it out your life. If your relationship causes you to not focus on the father, it's causing you stress, you cursing, you fighting, you acting a fool, you getting in trouble with the police or whatever. It's messing up your life. It's dysfunction. You can't focus on the father. Because you steady arguing. Instead of trying to build something up, instead of getting in y'all word together, your spouse rather argue with you. Or whatever. It's always a problem. It's never peace. It's never want to talk about the most high. 
or it's taking you away. Maybe you in the word and your spouse or your mate is trying to pull you away from that. Get rid of them. Take yourself apart from them. Your job, your car, your internet, your social media, your video game, your food, anything that's causing you to sin, to put it before the Father, to go against the Father, to neglect the Father, get it out your life. It's not going to help you. Is it going to be hamburgers or heaven? Is it going to be sex or heaven? Is it going to be sports or heaven? Is it going to be a, a nice car or heaven? This is real question. This is like for real. It's not no joke or no game. And the closer that you get to the Father, the closer you get in your spiritual walk, you're going to see it. That it's not a game. You try to bring others, but you only can do so much. If they listen, like the father told Ezekiel, if they listen, they listen. If they don't, they don't. But he made sure, Ezekiel, I'm holding you responsible. I'm putting the spirit in you so strong and deep that you're going to have to talk about me constantly. You're going to have to go through all these things and do these things. And if you don't tell the people, then I'm holding, they sin. If they don't turn away, I'm holding it against you. If you don't tell them. Now, if you tell them and they refuse to turn away, that's on them. For us, if you can bring somebody to the Father, great. But ultimately, you have to do what you have to do and worry about you. If they don't listen, don't get all angry and frustrated and all. You can't make nobody do nothing. And the father don't want nobody that's lukewarm. He don't want all that hesitancy. And he can bring them. If he need to bring them, he going to bring them. But he don't want nobody playing games with him and not taking him seriously and all of that. And it can be frustrating because if you're on a certain path, then you may you won't, may want to carry others on your back. But when he called you, he didn't call you and everybody else. That was a one-on-one -on -one conversation. He didn't call. It wasn't no uh, conference call. It wasn't a group chat when he called you. He called you. It's up to them. All you can do is let his light shine through you. And do his works and his will. Because a lot of times, they don't know no Elohim. They don't know no goodness, no light, no peace, no joy. They don't know Yah. Only through you will they see him. Because most people in the world is not exhibiting it. So we have to be the light as believers. And if we lose faith when we go through things, then they may say, well, they may question. They're going to question us and they're going to question the father. They're going to say, well, if you don't believe, you ain't got no strong faith because you was cool until they gave you that bad diagnosis or you was cool until you lost your job. Now you don't, you don't believe in them like you say. Or now you like, oh, he don't love me. 
Cause I don't got my my car got repossessed. Or my stomach hurt, my head hurt. I got cancer. I got this or whatever. So the Most High must don't love me. That's that's preposterous. We can't think like that. Things are gonna happen. We have to transition out these bodies. If the Father bring you closer to Him, how He don't love you? That's Him loving you. Even if when we transition, when we die in the physical, if he love you and he bring you to the kingdom of heaven, that's the ultimate love. That's the greatest thing that can happen to you. You can't say he love you just because he, oh, because he keep you in the physical going through all this stuff. But even while we in the physical, he still allows you to endure. If you can talk, it's because of him. If you can walk, it's because of him. If you open your eyes, it's because of him. All glory to the Father. So, if we learn anything as you go on in life, as you look at, you read your word, as you look at the history of your people, patience, faith, long suffering. It's all throughout our history. We can't do nothing without Yah, period. Read the Bible, look at our history, look at what we're going through now, look at those around you. But don't look at them with a sense of envy or nothing like that because everything is working in the Father's favor. Even the wicked. It's better for you to suffer in righteousness than to have many things, riches and wickedness. It's whether for, better for you to be poor and be righteous and know the Father than to be rich. It's better for you to be hated by men and loved by the Father than loved by men and hated by the Father. Period. I thank y'all for your time. This is Brother J. Israel. I thank and praise the Most High Yah for, letting, for allowing me to be here to speak into fellowship with you, to learn, to teach, to uplift whatever that I'm doing. I pray that it edifies the Father, it, it glorifies the Father, it honors the Father. I thank you for your time, I pray for your strength and your endurance and your long suffering that the Father gets you through, that he gives you his peace, he gives me his peace because we all must walk and pick up our burden. As Hamashiach says, you must pick up your cross, pick up your burden and follow me if you want to be with me, if you want to be in the kingdom. Hallelujah.